depending on where you are on earth. Um, I'm the facilitator for the Yahweh Direct channel, and we will start our uh, video today, which understanding one, and uh, let's begin. Uh, before we get started with Yo, I'd like to take the time. to thank these people for their support with their donations for the Yahweh Direct channel. Um, we use all income to further um, studies, media, pictures, um, books, supporting information. But also to buy where like microphones, cameras, software, uh, computers. So we thank you so very much for your support. And while I'm at it, I would like to add, um, if you would please subscribe if you like our channel and you're getting good information, um, please subscribe to our channel and to the analytics. 36% of you do watch the channel steadily, but you do not subscribe. And we would really appreciate your support, which would help in getting uh, the videos out for the channel. Um, out to more to the public to spread the truth in the word of Yahuwah. If you would like to donate, we would love to have your support. Um, we have two avenues for a donation. One is paypal.me slash Yahuwah. And the second one is our on cash app. And it's the dollar sign Yahuwah Direct. We thank you so much for your consideration. All right, so what you're looking at now <clears throat> is um, a portion of Blue Letter Bible. This is their format, how they do the verses in each chapter. And um, I wanted to point out something, and that's this interesting little symbol right here. Um, this symbol is a, a paragraph mark called a pyro. A pyro is um, a, that shows either the start of a paragraph um, the start of a separate paragraph, I'm sorry, and it also marks um, a new thought. Now there was an older, um, a older paragraph mark, and it was called the Capitulum, and it indicated the beginning of a chapter or a paragraph. Now that's not used anymore. The Pilcro is used, and why I'm pointing this out is to know that we do not have the entirety of Scripture as do. We that um, Genesis is telling the entailed story of the beginning, and obviously it is not. If you look at verses 1 and 2, um, that is the paragraph, and then verse 3 starts a new paragraph. So, um, and I will show you as we go on further into the video, that there's information after, in between verse two and three, that's missing. All right, and I will actually show that at the end of the natural chapter, which is with, um, in Genesis chapter two, verse four, that's the actual end of the natural first chapter. And we'll get into that when we get to there. But I just wanted to show you that. And here um, is an illustration of the original capitulum of this left down here, that was the symbol of pitulum. It changed over time and turned into a pit. So in this series, we're going to follow, we're going to, we're going to press and um, get the information that we can get out of there. Uh, hallelujah, that we can still derive some information even though it has been redacted. Okay, so <clears throat> this is verse one. And as you can see up here, we have the English, what's in everyone's scripture book, right? And it's right here off to the left also. In the beginning, Allah uh, created the heavens and the earth. And what I did with the scripture, um, yes, and Yahud is from right to left. And I put a word, above the Yahudith word so that you can see that goes with each portion of 
what we have in our strip books. Then I'm going to go into depth because every word in here is not um, translated into the version of uh, verse one. I'm going to go through, we're going to examine at length. Um, I am going to highlight a word um, that's like the basis of the whole verse and we'll, we'll just get into it. So the first one, um, Bereshith, or a lot of people say Bereshith, but Beresh Yath is actually a root word, uh, actually two words, and a, a prefix. Now, the Bath, as you know it, but it's actually a Ba, um, it means empty. So you'll see the Strong's number with each entry. You'll see the Strong's number that you can look up for yourself, and you'll see a very short definition. All right, Rosh, that means beginning or head. <clears throat> and then Yath is the sign. So right here in the very first so-called word, first word, in the beginning, you actually have two words and a prefix. They all mean something different. And instead of in the beginning, it's a, as, a, as a sign of the beginning. Sign, um, we can go into that. As you know, the introduction to Genesis 1 video, we talked about the words Ath and Yath. So let's get into Yath. So the Thu or the Tav, it means mark all by itself, to be marked or a, a, a sign. So what kind of mark is this? Well, if you add the Yod and make it Yath, it means it's a, a, a working sign, a sign of power, a sign of working, a sign of um, might. And since we know that Yath is, it does mean sign, but it's in relation to a verb, Rosh being that verb, Rosh meaning the beginning and the head, it maintains that position. Okay, so it is a action word. Now, not only is the book named Beresh Yath, or I should say the chapter Beresh Yath, the entire book, because the entire book talks about the beginning, the signs of the beginnings of several things, not only of the creation in the earth, uh, Yahweh's um, covenant with Abraham and his seed, the birth of the Yasharel as a nation, um, going into captivity, being free. So there's a whole bunch of firsts in the first book of um, scripture. All right, so we'll go on to this next word. Now, um, Bera or Bra means to create. And the entire word you can see underlined here in yellow, that goes to the Strong's number of Bera, right? But then you see this short, shorter two-letter version. This is the actual root word to Bera, just or bar. And you will find that in this Strong's number, and that means to separate. So let's look a little bit uh, further about Bera and Bra and the root word bar. So, as we already know, it means to select or create. Um, it's also in the word, the Yaudith word for covenant, which is uh, Barath, <clears throat> or some people say Berit, but it means a covenant, right? And I have highlighted the root word. So, a sign of the covenant, right? Also, Bera with a hey or a ha at the end, it means to cut and eat. And you can look up the corresponding Strong's numbers. And then lastly, the actual root word bar means to purify, to cleanse. That is the actual word that we use for a bar of soap. Bar, because the soap cleanses. So it's a straight, it's a straight, like it's not even translated. The use is directly from Yahud Yath. So when we talk about bar, we're talking about all of these things because it's the root word to all these things. And all these things are incorporated into Bera. So let's go back. So Bera, in the beginning, <clears throat> word, Allah Ya'am, uh, that a lot of people say, um, Elohim, 
with uh, Nakud, but um, Alaham or Alayam with uh, some people say it that way. And it is, it is plural. It actually means deities or mighty ones or G-O-Ds, but specifically that an oath was given to. Now, from this point forward, I am not going to say Allah Ya'am. I am going to say Yahuwah's name, which is why I have it up here highlighted in purple, because we all know that Yahuwah's name was taken out of. It was replaced initially with uh, Allah Ya'am in um other words that meant deities, and then it was replaced again in English by L-O-R-D and G-O-D. So I, from this point forward, I'm not going to say that. I will have it up there, but I am going to say Yahua. So the next one is sign, ath. We know that means a signal or a beacon. Okay, and we'll move on. Ha. <clears throat> This is Hasham Yam, or some people say Hasham Mayim, but Hasham Yam, this is the heaven. The is a word. It's um, shortened in the front of the word. It is Ha. That's He Alp. Ha. And Ha, Strong's number, means to behold something. To behold something is to look and observe and see something. And something has to be there for you to see and observe and behold. So the original meaning of ha, and I have done the research on this, the original meaning of ha is a place or a location. So as we go on, in the as a sign of the beginning, Yahuwah created the sign. What kind of sign? Because again, thu means sign or mark all by itself. Sign with the alp in front of it. Alp means leader. Alp means chief. So as a sign of the beginning, Yahuwah created the chief sign of the place, Sham Yaum, heaven. All right? But there's a couple of words that are within this word, so we'll look at that. Underline is the root word Sham, as in Shem, one of Noah's sons. Shem means to establish something. Not, I shouldn't say Shem, Sham. Sham means to establish something. Sham means a name. Sham means your reputation. So, Yahuwah created the chief sign of the place of heaven, of the place of his name and his reputation and another word, Mayam or Mayam, the place of waters. You can look up these Strong's numbers to verify that it's true. Actually, I would like you to so you can follow along and know this for yourself. So all three of these are true in Sham Yaum, heaven, Yahuwah's name and reputation and waters. We'll get to the verse where Yahuwah divides the waters into the firmament. But all three of these are true. And we talked about that in the introduction video where uh, a word could have several meanings and they're all true at the same time. Moving on. And Ath, another chief sign. Ha, again, place to behold something. Arts, the entire word underlined means earth. But there's a root word to arts and it's Rosh Sad, and that's rats, and, and yes, rats, as in the uh, little rodent that runs around. Another direct correlation, rats means to run back and forth, and I have the strong numbers there. So let's go over it. As a sign of the beginning, Yahuwah created, Yahuwah separated, Yahuwah cleansed. Yahuwah made a covenant of the chief sign of the place of his, of heaven, uh, the place of Yahuwah's name and reputation, the place of waters, and the chief sign of the place of earth and the place of running. 
So here is what the verse says um, from the previous page in everyone's scripture book. And here's the more exhaustive, uh, detailed, including every word, because Oth and Yath are never translated. I don't know why they made that decision. But when what Yahuwah is saying is that when you look outside and you see the earth, and you look up, in, look up in the sky and you see the heavens. Those are signs that he made creation. That's all the sign you need. Is just look outside, look out, look up. And he made distinct places for distinct things. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um. I know in the community tab, I let it be known that um, I didn't put a video up in the last few weeks because I, I had laryngitis. All of a sudden, I had an infection um, in my throat, and I got laryngitis, and I completely lost my voice. I am still recovering, so the raspiness that you hear and me clearing my throat, um, I'm still getting over it, and please excuse that. So now we're on verse 2. And again, we have the Yaudyath from right to left. We have the English version, the English writing uh, above each word that it's meant for. And we have that as it's, as it's written in everybody's scriptures book. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of Yahuwah moved upon the face of the water. So let's dig in this and see if we can get more information out of it. All right, so behold, we know what that is. It's a place. And the place of arts, earth. We know that also the place of running. All right, the place of chief running. Because again, the alp is in front, leading, chief, primary, Running the place, the earth, or the place of running. <clears throat> now, this word, um, this word they say is supposed to be haya, which means to exist, which is uh, ha ya ha. But the problem that I personally have with this is that there's a big old thu or tav in the middle of this word, and um. I have been studying scripture and um, the Yahudith language for years, and I've never seen a thu be put in the midst of a word to mean it any sort of present or past tense. So I personally think that the word is actually yath, which is another sign. <clears throat> and I think it's hayatha, which is the sign. Um, and so we'll go on, but that's just my opinion. All right, um, thau. The word thau means to be shapeless. U and bahu, thau u bahu, bahu again. Um, at the beginning of the first verse, ba. This is actually the letter Beth or Bath. Okay, it's ba, and it means to be hollow, it means to be empty, and this word is a true definition of that. So if we go back, all right, I'm going to say that this is sign, okay, and the place of the sign of earth, or and as a sign of the place of the earth, was shapeless and empty. Moving forward, and darkness, kashak, u kashak, and darkness, el panya, el, long a, means to go up, to ascend, to rise. Panya, pan, means face, or in this case, surface, because it's an, an inanimate object. So, I'll just I'll just keep going. Of the deep. Faum. Faum is deep waters of the sea. Okay? Now the root word to Faum is whom. 
ha u mom and it means motion so in the deep sea the waves are always moving and shifting deep waves of the sea all right and ruk that means spirit a lot of people say ruak but ruk resh u kath ruk yaua Marakath, Marapath, tremendous movement. L again, to go up. Panda again, surface. Ha, Mayam. Mayam means water, sea. And the root word of Mayam is Yam, which is sea. So Mayam means waters, excuse me. Yam means seas, which is what was referenced here at the deep part of the sea. So to go over this again <clears throat> in its full exhaustive uh, translation. And the sign of the earth was formless, was shapeless or without form and empty or void. And darkness rose up to the face of the deep. And Yahuwah's spirit moved tremendously up against the face of the waters or the face of the seas. The place of the face of the waters or the face of the seas. So what you have here is there's things going. Um, now, in our original definition or the original verse, it says, some verses say that Yahuwah's spirit kind of fluttered over the waters. But this word here, um, rakath, rak, rakapath, tongue, tie, tongue twister, uh, rak, rakapath, it means to a very strong like a tremor a tremors you would get before or after an earthquake that Yahuwah's Rook moved strongly against the face of the water so it seems to me that there's some sort of conflict right darkness come up from the deep and rise up to the dark up to the surface of the seas and Yahuwah's himself his rook his spirit moves against that against the face of the waters so to me that seems like a con a conflict which has never been described before and um here's my exhaustive uh translation this, and the sign of the earth was shapeless and empty, and darkness went up to the surface of the deep, and Yahuwah's spirit moved greatly up against the surface of the waters. So what is happening here? There's something that's happening. And, you know, I prayed and I asked Yahuwah, and um, I went searching, and I, I believe that Yahuwah, he directed me to find the answer. So Kashak, darkness, here's the Strong's numbers. Um, it means to stop, to cease movement. And it also means, and this is actually in Gesenius's concordance, a dark place as of Hades. Hades is the Greek word for hell. Hell is the English word, but they mean the same thing. Now in Yaudith, hell is the word Shaul. Here's the number. And it says it's a sub terranean place that means below earth full of thick darkness thick kashak all right so i i started looking further because i'm like okay yo I, I think there's something here let me let me look so i did and in uh kazoom revelations 12 7 through 9 12 and 13 it talks about there was a war in heaven and Michael and his angels fought, you know, Satan and his angels. They got kicked out. And in this down here, this third little paragraph, I want to read this to you. 
Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. Because Satan and the angels got kicked out. So they're like, hey, be happy up here. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth and what? The sea. So going back to verse 2, darkness rose up to the face of the sea. But woe to you, to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows he has but a short time. All right. Now, um, there is another verse that I couldn't fit in here because of the space constraint. Verse 13, it says that it shows that, uh, like, the devil got kicked out so fast, he didn't realize he was kicked out till he was on the earth. Like, he, he looked around and saw that he was on the earth. And this verse here in um, Luke is Yahusha saying he saw Satan fall like lightning. Now listen, we all know how fast lightning strikes the ground. That was a fast fall. You understand what I'm saying? When you don't even know you got kicked out, that's serious. That's just serious. I just wanted to put that in there. All right, so going back to the Kashak, um, I found another verse in Jude 1 6. And the angel which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he has reserved in everlasting chains under what? Darkness until the judgment of the great day. Kashak. Last verse, 2 Peter 2, 4. For if Yahuwah spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, Shaul, Shaul, and delivered them into chains of what? Darkness, to be reserved unto judgment. So what I'm saying, going back to verse 2, is that I don't know if they were down there the fallen angels, the Nepal angels, the Nepal Malachia. I don't know if they was getting out of their chains because this says chains of darkness. And this says chains under darkness. So as the darkness lifted up to the surface of the sea, what was happening that made Yahweh himself come down and fight against that? We don't know. Why? Because the rest of that paragraph is gone. But what do you think? Let me know. All right. So let's compare the two verses that we talked about. We got the original version and the exhaustive version. Verse 1, in the beginning, Allah created the heavens and the earth. The exhaustive one that we did here today, including every word and all the meanings, as a sign of the beginning, Yahuwah created the chief sign of the place of his name and reputation, the chief sign of the place of heaven, the chief sign of the waters, and the chief sign of the place of running, the chief sign of Haartz, the chief sign of the earth. Next verse, verse 2, in the original, and the earth was out formed. And void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of Yahweh moved upon the face of the waters. That's that fluttering that they all indicate. Like it was a gentle caressing of the seas. No, no, no. And the sign of the earth was shapeless and empty. And darkness went up to the surface of the deep. And Yahweh's spirit moved tremendously up against the surface of the water. So let me know. What do you think? Do you think there's something there? Do you think those verses are missing? I don't know. Let me know in the comments or send me an email and we'll see. So in our next uh, video, we will talk. We'll do the next pill crow. We'll talk about verses three through five. We'll get in depth and see if there's anything there extra besides what we all know. All right. So if you have any questions or comments, please send me an email um, at uh, yahuadirect at mail.com. Please do not send it to Gmail. That's not my that's not the email. 
It's just mail.com. All right. And again, please subscribe if you are getting information, if it's helping you in your understanding with scripture, helping you to understand the original language in which was written, then please subscribe to the channel so you can get notifications when new videos arise. And please, if you're moved, please send donations. Here are the information there. It'll also be in the description box below the video. So thank you so much. Here are the credits that I use. Uh, here's everything that I use uh, to help me with the video today. And while you're looking at that, I just want to thank you uh, for being patient. Thank you for all the people who prayed for me, for my sickness and, and, and wanted me to get better. And um, I pray that Yahua continues to cover all of you and your family, that he forgives you of any sins that you may forgive, and that he continues to protect you, to provide for you, to keep you safe and healthy during these uncertain times. Thank you, and um, shalom to you.